Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone. And welcome back, Betty. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to see you. And now it's John's turn to be on vacation. <laughs> we'll miss John, but we wish him well. He and Christy have a, some time off together this weekend. So what a blessing that we have the two of you and you can do this kind of back and forth covering for each other. Thank you so much. It's good to see everyone. And it's lovely that we're not here like we were last week, nail-biting, holding our breath, worried about what kind of a hurricane was going to hit Southern California. <sighs> Let's just enjoy the moment. Hurricane. Hurricane. Betsy has, uh, Betty has a new word, hurricane. Yes. So I, I have heard that no one has had any damage from either the earthquake or the storm, so thanks be to God for that. Um, and nice that we can be together, whether it's online or in person, and not have that anxiety hanging over our heads, right? So praise be to God for that, that we've been through that and not a lot of damage, at least in this area. Today is our day to think about who God and who Jesus is to us. As you probably saw in the weekly word, uh, we have Peter today in his famous, very famous statement when, when Jesus asks the disciples, all of them together, so who do y'all say that I am? Peter answers right away and says, does anybody know? You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yes, that is such a famous quote, and we sometimes measure ourselves and our reactions to that question against Peter. I'd like to invite you to let go of that for this week. If you read that and you thought to yourself, well, I don't know if I would have said that, and it made you feel a little not so great, try and let that go. That's not what that lesson is about. So... Today we are in the presence of God to share and hear from God and to share the experience of being in God's presence and um, take in the grace and love and forgiveness of God. So I invite you to take a moment and just breathe that in, center yourself, relax, and be open to the power of the Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Our first lesson is Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 6. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all who waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples, and the coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will be never be ended. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalms responsibly. I will give you thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet heirs of the lowly, receiving the high. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand <clears throat> against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Our second lesson is Romans 12, 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and the proportions to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, 
the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in the cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you all say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So to be in Caesarea Philippi, some of you have probably actually been there, but most of us probably haven't. So just a little bit of a backdrop. To be in that district that Jesus is in, that this story is set in, is to be surrounded, inundated, with signs and symbols of a wide variety of religious and spiritual practices of the day. Temples to Greek gods, shrines, divining practices of one kind and another on display, statues and edifices dedicated to every imaginable spirit or god. It isn't hard to imagine that in the midst of that kind of backdrop, far from the religious homogeneity of home, Jesus' mind begins to wander into curiosity. How do the people in this context view him? What kind of a person or God or prophet compared to all of the rest of these that are on display around us do people see me as? And it makes sense that the disciples' first answers are expressions of their historical faith, the rock out of which they were hewn. They say a prophet in great Hebrew tradition in the, from the scriptures, a personality akin to one of the greats of the faith, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. And so Jesus gets the sense that they're still looking at him out of their own traditional understanding of who he is. But then he hones the question down. And he makes it not so much a question of curiosity, but a question of relationship. Who are we to each other? How do you all see me? An altogether more poignant question. 
And right on cue, Peter responds with the familiar words, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. How does he even know this? There hasn't been much of anything that would have showed him that other than Jesus' power to heal thus far. And Jesus makes it clear that it isn't that he's getting an A in all things Jesus-related, that the Spirit of God has convicted his heart. He knows this truth from the inside out, not because he's the smartest one in the group, which we get reinforced over and over again in the scriptures later, right? In the weekly word, I know some of you probably read it, I know maybe not everyone has, but in this last week's weekly word, I asked all of us to think about what would our answer be to that question? Not, as I said, to compare ourselves to Peter, that's not the point, but to say, do we know, out of, out of our heart and our conviction, what would our response be? And it's more like asking, what has the Holy Spirit taught your hearts? That you, what is a truth that has settled in that you hold dear at the core of who you are? like Peter had? What have been the convicting moments, the experiences that have bolstered your heart in such a way to confirm your faith? Maybe it just happened as a child listening to the scriptures being read by parents and grandparents. Or maybe as you're growing up, the songs that you heard that embedded the word of God into your mind and heart indelibly. Or maybe it has evolved after you've spent time in nature, or being at camp, or being at youth gatherings, or maybe at adult retreats. Or maybe it was a relationship with someone whose faith was strong, a friend, a relative, a pastor. There's a lot of truth to the saying that faith is perhaps more caught than taught from simply being around people who are faithful. Or maybe today you are in a place in your life where you don't have any kind of emphatic answer like Peter. Maybe you're full of questions or doubts, still feeling like you're hedging your bets spiritually, waiting for God to do something dramatic that you believe will finally crystallize that faith and you'll have a single-hearted, single-mindedness about yourself. When I went to visit my sister for her 65th birthday a couple of weeks ago, we stayed in a and b for a couple of nights on the edge of the Sound. My sister lives in Seattle, so the Sound is right there next to it. Seattle. And on the walls of this lovely studio getaway, there was an immense collection of art of every kind, books, but also sculptures and paintings. Beauty was just everywhere. The ocean was exquisite. The trees, the birds, the miles of blackberry bushes laden down with late summer fruit. And in the midst of all of this overwhelmingly exquisite beauty, there was a little black, simple frame, probably not bigger than four by six, on the wall, sort of unceremoniously tucked in in the midst of all the rest of the art. And it, had, it was simply a white piece of paper framed in a black plastic frame. And handwritten on the paper were the words, if you're looking for a sign from God, this is it. <laughs> Now, I get the humor of the double meaning of the phrase, and it's, it's cute. But later, it hit me at several other layers, and I had to laugh at the layers of irony. Because wouldn't it just be like we humans to be surrounded by such immense, stellar beauty, and yet be looking for a sign from God inside four walls of one room? I mean, how ironic that we can be tempted to shrink our world in order to try and find God, when in fact 
God is all around us and inviting us into a more expansive experience of life. The layers of I and E were not lost on me. So often, though, it isn't words that convict our spirits of who God is. So much as it is experiences that touch us beyond the words. Experiences that bypass all our ability to control and order life. Experiences that maybe bring us to our knees, or maybe make us feel like singing or dancing or belly laughing until we can't breathe. Those are the moments we remember, right? Those are the moments we cherish, and those are the moments that change us. Peter and the disciples had had experiences like that with Jesus, time and time again. But in this place and time, surrounded as we are by all the incredible variety of religious and explicitly not religious influences of our day, it seems like those experiences that transform us from the inside out may seem fewer and farther between than they once did. Anybody? And even when we do experience something profound, if we don't share it on Facebook, did it actually happen? <laughs> or Twitter? When and where do we even talk about those kinds of experiences? How do we cultivate the practice of listening to the Holy Spirit when we hardly ever take time to really listen to each other? Or to what is being whispered on the wind or in silence to us by the Holy Spirit or maybe through Scripture? So I want to invite us to revisit this question again at a deeper level. Who is Jesus to us right now? Not yet. <laughs> Who is Jesus to us when we're hurting or lost or confused or get a cancer diagnosis or get news that someone in our family has been killed? or that there's been some other kind of tragedy or hardship or international abuse of power where hundreds and thousands of lives have been affected. Who is Jesus to us when we think about the people in Maui today? Who is Jesus to us? I want us to actually engage around that question. I know. This might seem different than a regular Sunday, so take a deep breath. But I'm going to invite you to turn around or we'll sit, lean forward and create some groups of two or three people at the most so that everybody gets a chance to hear and to talk. Create some groups of two or three, and I want to invite you to ask, answer, or reflect on one of the following three questions. Who is Jesus to you right now? And I want you to be honest. You don't have to sound like Peter. You can sound like anybody. You can just sound like you. Who is Jesus to you when you're hurting or lost or confused or afraid? Who, and what is, the what is one experience that you've had in life that taught you to love God or to trust God or to be still before God? Either one of those three questions. Dave's going to put them up for us so you can look back and reference them. I want you to just take a few moments and share as honestly as possible with one another the answer to just one of those questions. Just one. Pick whichever one feels most comfortable to you. Or most challenging, if that's what you're up for today. And I want to invite you to really listen to each other. To not interrupt, to not say, oh yeah, me too, or I had that happen. Just listen, just be present to one another when it's not your turn to share. So will you 
Will you take a few moments and do that now? And those of you who are online, if there's somebody there with you, please do this exercise and share with one another. But if there's no one there with you, that's fine. Please just take a few moments and write down your answers. And maybe sometime later today or tomorrow or this week, there'll be somebody that you can choose to have that conversation with and choose to share your answers to that story with. Hopefully. <laughs> There's so much good conversation still going on, I hesitate to interrupt it. Um, but I hope that you can continue these conversations, maybe later today after worship, maybe uh, over a cup of coffee. Did you learn something new about how the Holy Spirit has worked in someone's life to confirm faith? What about in your own life? Did you learn something new about how the Holy Spirit has worked in your story? Okay. Sometimes just verbalizing our own stories and thinking them through out loud changes how we understand our own experiences. Do you feel more connected to the truth about who Jesus is to you. Well, I hope that you will continue to have this kind of conversation this week, to keep growing and listening this week, to understand in greater depth and in greater diversity how Jesus is the Messiah to those of us who trust in him, how he is the face of the living God, how that story may not ever come together in a perfect way. We may never sound like the poster child for Peter or um, saying things exactly in some noteworthy or quote-worthy way. But growing in our faith and growing in how Jesus, who Jesus is to us makes all the difference in the world. And sometimes we don't have those conversations very frequently. So I invite you to consider taking these questions, any one of them, or something that you think of this week, and ask somebody to have that same kind of conversation with you about who Jesus is to you, and maybe who Jesus is to them.
<clears throat> Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. God of all creation, build your church and build your Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. God of all creation. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts, to respond to your teachings. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia and Hawaii. Empower those who would rebuild and bring healing. God of all creation. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low. Keep safe any in the midst of trouble. And protect vulnerable people from harm. We name before you those who are in need of your healing touch. For those in need of healing from cancer and treatment side effects, Patty Reynolds, Owen Baker, John Murray, David Edson, Jean Christensen, Duffy Walton, Jacob Kalau, April Bryan, Sherry Alexander, and Pastor Janet. For those in need of healing in body, mind, <coughs> soul, and our spirit, Cole Lopez, Mary Jean Schlossler, Margo, Brittany Morales, Don Schneider, Stephanie Truex, Jane Christensen, and David Sanchez. <coughs> Encourage those who offer their gifts <coughs> excuse me, and talents in service to your church. Energize this congregation's roster and lay leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, administrators, so that they may be transferred in sharing your grace. God of all creation. For what other prayers would you like to lift? God of all the saints, death is overcoming Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithful departed. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to our heavenly home. God of all creation. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciles all creation, Jesus, our Savior and friend. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share a word of that peace with one another. That's peace to those of friends online. Please be seated. Oops, took off the mic. Please be seated as we uh, share, as we take this morning's offering. A special word of thank you to um, 
Those of you who are so faithful about your giving, um, both online as well as in person, um, thank you so much for that. I want to especially uh, lift up, I didn't think about doing it in the prayers, but I want to lift up to you our, um, oh, please feel free and start while I'm talking. Yeah. Um, our, the Jewish community that worships here a couple times a month, Makem or so, uh, Macomb or Shalom Congregation, um, they are busy preparing for the High Holy Days that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. So you may see a little bit more activity around the congregation. If so, please wish them a meaningful High Holy Days. Uh, and um, if you have any questions about that, just feel free to let me know. God of wind and rain, sea and sky, seedlings and deserts, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
just want to say a special thank you, Betty. Um, in addition to the applause that is our appreciation for the whole congregation. But there's something about special music when it's instrumental that leads us into a worship space beyond words. And we don't often have a lot of spaces, even in worship, without words. So thank you so much for the beauty of that. Please stand as we prepare our hearts to receive God's feast of love and forgiveness. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, mighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Would you pray with me, please? We thank you, generous God, for the lavish gift of yourself, which restores our lives. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing our sending song, and remember your instruments are handy for this.
The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now until the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for announcements. Okay, that had to be the last announcement because yeah, you can't talk that, right? Okay. All right. Go in peace. Share who Jesus is to you, no matter what the screen says up there. Amen. Amen.